Hello again, everybody. I know I already made a video today, but that was just kind of an introduction to my channel for uh, for newbies. Um, and so I just wanted to actually make a video for today, Sunday. Um, I was actually hoping to make a video at an event I was at earlier today, um, but we actually ended up only being there for 30 minutes. But um, I already had hinted that we were somewhere in a comment to somebody in my previous video and I was hoping to get to show everything that happened there, um, but it was very brief and we didn't get to do it. So um, here's the second best thing. My co-host, Luna. Say hi, Luna. She's um, a Pug Pekingese mix. Oops, watch out, don't tinkle your paws on my work. Um, She's partially blind, she's old, she's about 13 and a half, and um, she's my baby. She is old and runs into everything, and um, she'll be a uh, co-host quite often whenever I'm here in my room, um, and so she's a little lover. Um, since she runs into everything, I've decided that her Halloween costume this year is going to be a demolition derby car, so that when it, whenever she runs into shit, she's in character. How does that sound to everybody? Give me a thumbs up in the comments if you think that's a good idea. Um, hopefully you agree that that would be really cute because um, she runs into everything. So um, it's sometimes, I mean, it's terrible to laugh, but sometimes, I mean, she'll be like walking straight forward and then she just makes a right turn straight into the wall and it's hard to not laugh because it's like she doesn't know what's going on and it's it's really hard not to laugh oh i love you little luna i named her luna after luna lovegood from harry potter because she's my um favorite from the books and from the movies uh favorite tertiary character um i, I used to say non-essential and that's not true she is essential but I love her because she's very much like me. Um, everyone thinks she's batshit crazy. She says all the craziest things. Um, but she's still highly lovable. And um, and she's also, not tooting my own horn, but in the movies, very pretty. And in real life, the actress that she's grown up has been very pretty. Um, and she was on Dancing with the Stars and she almost won. Um, oh. I used to let her sleep in bed with me, but after she went blind, she kept falling off the bed in the middle of the night. So now she has to sleep on the floor in her little bed. But anyways, all right, Luna, you're going to the floor because I don't want you to fall off the bed. Anyways, um, the event that we went to... Now that um, my co-star is no longer on the bed, was um, this dog thing. I can't, like, my, my phone is what I'm recording on because I can't, uh, I don't have a video recorder on my laptop yet. Um, and it was like, it was just this bar that had um, a... Uh, dog party and a friend of mine that's in my other crochet group because I have two crochet and knitting groups that I go to the one that I am the leader of and um, that's the one that Derek and I met through and um, the other is and that's Derek the Knitwit um, Derek and that's knit as in K-N-I-T um, I'm subscribed to him if you do not follow him um He's a good friend of mine. And then the other is another one here in Norman. It's primarily all women who knit. And they're all really great people. But Paige from that group, she just adopted a dog. And a friend of hers was like, I want to be um, the uh, flower girl at your wedding. And she's like, well, I'm not going to get married. But you can be the flower girl at his um like baptism or whatever, like, cause she had just adopted this dog. And so there was this event going on at the bar. And so she brought her dog and there was going to be like a big party there. Well, 
like all the dogs showed up and then there were like a bunch of kids and it was crazy and she was like I'm getting the fuck out of here because it was just it was it, my, I it was not so I mean like it wasn't that bad but like there was just one dog it was small it was really cute his name was Buckley or Bucky or something like that and he would not shut the fuck up I mean seriously like he was going fucking crazy and um it was just I mean, like, I can see it was a bit much, but, like, her little, her, his, her pit bull, um, he was one of those pit bulls that, like, looked massive. He was, he was on the smaller side of, for a massive pit bull, like, very muscular, like, but he was chill. I mean, like, so chill. And I'm, I'm gonna get an Indian style, so I stop swinging my leg off the bed and jiggling the video. Um, but he was so chill. I think she was just worried for him because she just got him. But, like, he was acting fine. Like, yeah, I, and I, I think maybe, I don't know. I think she was just, she'd rather not have an incident with a dog that she doesn't know very well. I don't know. But... We didn't stay there very long. We were there like maybe half an hour. I got to see her, who I, I haven't seen her since before I went into rehab. I think maybe the last time I saw Paige was like October, I think. Early November, because I went into rehab November 21st. And before that, I was using heavily. And so I didn't make it to group a lot. So if I saw her, and, and when I did go to group, I don't think I saw her. I mean, it could have been September even. October, September, maybe August. I haven't seen her in such a long time. So it was still really good to see her. But I was bummed that we did not stay very long. Um, but it was still, it was fun. I got to play with a lot of dogs, uh, which is always a good day for me. And funny story... Um, I ran into a lady who had a dog named Eloise Cath Eloise Catherine. It was a tiny little Chihuahua. I mean, and it was a tiny, and it was wearing a little um, uh, sweater. And I, like a true dog person, I went up and said hello to the dog before saying hello to the owner, because that's what you do. And she did not take offense, and I wouldn't either. If I was out with Luna and someone came up and said hello to Luna and then before introducing themselves to me, I would be like, I get it. Um, you know, because that's just what you fucking do. You see a cute dog and you're like, hello, fucking cute dog. Like, I don't give a shit about your owner because I'm here to see you. Um, anyways, I um, was talking to her, and then whenever I was leaving, I was like, okay, I have to come over and say bye to you. And she was like, oh, you're leaving? Are you going to get Luna? And I was like, no, I live like 40 minutes away from here and like I don't want to go get her just to come back she's like oh I was hoping to meet her and I was like no and she had mentioned that she was just passing through on a trip and they just happened to have their dog when they came into this bar and it was all going on and um um wow I'm so surprised that I'm not ADDing out so bad like I'm so glad that my my Vivance is really working because um yeah, I like my storytelling used to be so bad. Like I would have been like all over the fucking place by now. But anyways, uh, she um, mentioned something about St. Louis. I forget exactly how it came up. And I was like, oh my God, I used to live in St. Louis. Where'd you go to high school? So if you ever meet somebody from St. Louis, just ask them where they went to high school. They will laugh. They'll say, oh, are you from St. Louis? Just say no and just say I was told to ask you by Drew. You don't know him, but I was just told to ask you. It is the St. Louis question. Everybody asks, when you meet someone in St. Louis, they'll be like, oh, where'd you go to high school? It's just the thing. I don't know who started it. Probably some rich asshole, because all it's asking is, how rich are you? And exactly how rich are you? Because... Amongst the rich people, there's still snobbery because in St. Louis, there are private schools. There's a shit ton of private schools. Oh, sorry. How rich are you and what area of the rich areas do you live? Uh, because there's a bunch of private schools and um, 
And among those private schools, there's still snobbery over which of the private schools you go to. Like, oh, are you... Like, oh, God, I've, I've moved away almost two years now. I can't even think of some of the private school names. But, like, if you go to public school, ooh. And even when it comes to the public schools, there's still some that are, you know, like, oh, you went to Fort Zumwalt North? Ugh. Which is the one I went to. Uh, the year we moved to St. Louis from Oklahoma, um, that year and the previous two years, they had the highest birth rate out of all of the public schools in the entire U.S. Our, our school district did. So claim to fame, we're the fertile fort. That's what David Letterman referred to us on as on uh, David Letterman, the late, was that the late show? Late show with David Letterman? Yeah, we were the fertile fort. So yeah, that was, you know, that was fun being on national television, our, our whole shame being broadcasted, fertile fort. Um, and, um, for, so for whatever, three years in a row, we were, had the highest birth rate. But anyways, see, now my ADHD is getting out of control. Anyways, um, well, yeah, what high school did you go to? That's where we are. Um, so it's just sussing out how rich you are and what area of the rich areas do you live in? So if you ever meet somebody from St. Louis, just say, oh, I was about to ask you, what high school did you go to? And they will probably laugh. And they will assume that you are from St. Louis, though. So, so just say, I'm not from St. Louis, but what high school did you go to? Anyways. Um, oh. And whoever started that should burn in hell because it's really rude. But I had a boyfriend um, when I was 20, 21, 22. His name was Mitch Perry. And I met his mother. His mother was um, big in the nursing scene. She wrote a lot of nursing books. I can't remember her first name. But if you ever, any nurses, if you have any books that the last, because she was a writing, do, writing team. And I can't remember the other nurse's name. But if you have any nursing books and the, and the name is Perry, I met that bitch, and I mean bitch, because the first thing she asked me when I met her, oh, where'd you go to high school? And I told her, and she goes, oh. And she turned face and sat down at the table and barely talked to me at the entire meal. And this was the first time meeting her. She didn't give me a hug, didn't say nice to meet you, nothing. My sister's a nurse, and she was like, I suddenly don't feel so um, good about having spent thousands of dollars on all of her fucking books if that's the way she treated you. My sister's a nurse. She has her master's, and she's really amazing. <sighs> so, moral of the story, stay away from St. Louis because it's full of assholes. That's not true. I had a lot of bad experiences there. A lot of it has to do with drugs and gays who think that St. Louis is the motherfucking shit and truth be told, it's a great city on the whole. There's a lot to do there. It's a great place to visit. Uh, do not live there. The crime is terrible. It's, it has the highest, I, I, I don't know if it's true for right now, but it's had the highest crime rates out of the entire U.S. and for many years, out of the last 10 years. Um, and it's just, it's gone to hell. Uh, there's a lot to do there. They have the free zoo, a lot of free museums, the free art museum, special exhibits you have to pay for. Um, they have the city museum, which is not what it sounds. It's not an actual museum. It is... Um, a living art exhibits that you can play on. Um, it's like slides and things you can climb on and things like that. I'll put a link in the um, description of this video for, for City Museum. Um, it is amazing. It's like they have a bar in there. It's great for kids. Um, it's great for adults. It's like there's a Ferris wheel on the top. There's a slide that goes all the way from the top floor all the way down to the uh, ground floor. 
There's a slide from the third floor uh, to the ground floor. What am I doing? Talking too much about shit that pisses me off. Um, and it's just, it's a really fun place. And uh, the artist who made it um, is unfortunately dead. He was doing something with a crane and it fell on him and he died. But he just made this huge, took this huge empty building and made it into this amazing place and it's so cool it's so 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 cool like you can crawl through an airplane that's got all this stuff through it you crawl up like you just crawl up through shit and it's a good way to spend a Friday night when you have nothing else to do uh, there's a ball pit it's hum it's like a life-size like when you're at McDonald's and the kids play in the ball pit it's like that but it's life-size for adults and it's like, like the balls that are like this. And you go in there and you play like dodgeball with kids. Like there's, there's nothing better than pegging a 13 year old in the face with a fucking ball. Like I remember one time, um, actually it was with Mitch, um, the, the, the boy with the bitch bomb, the, my ex. And, um, it was his birthday and me and our other roommate, Sarah, um, we made a bunch of jello shots. And so we did like six jello shots each, went in, then we just intermittently come back outside, do jello shots. We went into the ball pit, spent probably about an hour and a half just pegging kids with balls. And that was probably one of the best times I've ever had in my entire life at the city museum. We just sat in there and you, what you do is you get in one of the corners, you build up a wall so you have like, and you, you push them out. So you're down, so you're protected. And then you jump up and then you fucking hit a kid. It's, it's wonderful. When you're like in your twenties, it's okay. Like if I did it now and I'm about to turn 35, like that would just, you know, it would be looked down upon. I, I don't know if I could do it now. I and mean, I'd probably still do it, but I don't live there, so I can't. And I can't drink, and so I, I would feel a lot more guilty about it in the moment. But, you know. And speaking of not drinking, for those who have not visited my channel before or watched Derek's live stream, I am a recovering meth addict and alcoholic. And uh, last week, I celebrated my three months... I um, have been a um, primarily a meth addict for 15 years. Wait, no. Well, yeah, 15 years. If I was still using, it would be 16 years. Wait, started using in November of when I was 19. Oh, let's say 15 years. I'm not going to do the math of when I first started using. That's going to be too difficult. Anyways, I, um, and I, my sober date is, uh, November the 19th of 2019. And I, the last time I drank was like, I can't remember when, probably a month before that. I haven't been drink. I hadn't been drinking a lot in the last year, but when I did, it would be out of control. I'd be like, I'm just going to have one drink. Hours later, I'm like trying to figure out a ride home because I cannot drive and I have no way to pay for an Uber home. So I am a problem drinker and every time I've come out of rehab, I've been like, meth is my only problem. I'm not going to give up drinking. So if you're unwilling to give up alcohol and you think meth is your only problem and you won't give up drinking, maybe you're a fucking alcoholic. What do you think, boys and girls? So, this time I've given up everything and guess what? Recovery is actually working for me. So, I've this is the happiest I've ever been and probably, well, oh, probably 35 years, almost 35 years. I... I'm not saying I had a shitty childhood, but I always just, yeah, I never felt like myself. I never felt, I, just, I don't know, I just felt like I was missing something. 
something just wasn't there. And I think part of that was just the gay thing and I didn't know what it was and I didn't know why I got along with girls but not with boys and stuff like that. All my friends were girls. I had, I had a couple of friends who were boys, but it was like we were the weird boys. Like we did the stupid stuff. You know, like that's why we got along is because we were fucking idiots. You know, like, and we didn't do, and they didn't do the typical boy stuff, like play football or, um, I, I, boy stuff, you know, sorry, I don't like, and like the only thing that's coming to mind right now is football. That's just one thing I vehemently hate. Although I was in marching band all through high school. And so I, I've gone to every football game since junior high. So... Huh. Anyways, um, but you know, football, talking about girls, stuff like that. None of my friends ever had girlfriends because we were all losers. Although I had, well, no, it's a lie. I had girlfriends, but I did that as a mask so people wouldn't call me faggot because the first time I got called a faggot was startling, mostly because this girl, um, we were sitting outside, I think it was it was 6th or 7th grade, I can't remember, I think it might have been 6th. We were sitting outside Altus Middle School, and um, this black girl I was sitting next to goes to Darius, I think his name was Darius, Dar Darius something, and goes, hey, he said you're cute, and I hadn't said shit, I wasn't looking at him, nothing, and I, like, I was astonished, and he goes, faggot. And after that, I was like, I need to cover my ass and, you know, make sure. I didn't know they were called beards back then. Like, I, you know, boys didn't have beards. So, you know, whatever. But I was like, I need to make sure that doesn't happen again because I did not like how it felt. And also, I wanted to punch that motherfucking twat in the face. Like, who the hell does that? Especially in the sixth grade. Man. I want to go back in time and seriously give that girl a talking to. As an adult me. Not a little kid me. But as an adult me. You can seriously fuck someone up doing shit like that. I could have gotten beat up. Speaking of beat up. I've only been in one fist fight in my entire life. Can you believe that? One fist fight. And I won. Oh. Um, I had some neighbor kids that lived catty corner across the street from us and they would, they, they would bully me. Like they would like say mean stuff. And like one time, like they pushed me over, uh, like one was like sitting behind me and his leg had his, put his leg behind my feet and his brother pushed me and I fell over. Well, one time Drew decided he'd had enough and I went to the younger one who was in my grade. And I, I don't even remember what happened, but my dad was outside. And he witnessed the whole thing. I went at him and I slapped the shit out of him. I didn't punch him. I slapped the shit out of him. And he ran inside to his house crying. And his brother was like, you shouldn't have done that. And he ran inside with, and his mom came out and was like, what did you do? And his dad said, my dad said, he had what was coming to him. They've been picking on him forever. And guess what? We became best friends. <laughs> All you have to do is slap the shit out of somebody and they'll be your best friend. It's just like being in the gay community. <sighs> we were maybe seven, eight tops. <laughs> But yeah, that's the only fight I've ever been in, and I won. So that's like my claim to fame. I've been in, I've been in a fight. I can handle myself. I, I don't know if I can. I play rugby, so I mean, I probably could. I, I probably could. I I know how to tackle somebody who's bigger than me. Like I've I've taken some guys down playing rugby that like would have probably astonish you. 
You'd be like, no way. And they were running? Yes. Y Yahweh. By the grace of God. Yahweh, I took them down. Seriously. Holy shit. If you saw it, I mean, like, it hurt the... I mean, I felt it the next day. Like, I mean, oh my God. What, Mom? My mom's putting some envelope underneath my door. Probably to signal that dinner is ready. You could have just yelled. No. <laughs> she said no. Well, anyways, I'm going to keep on going because I'm not done talking yet. <sighs> um, but yeah, rugby. About that. I just, I just, I'm just going to do a general topic of my life before now. Because before I just did a short introduction, we're just going to give things. We're just doing things. So rugby. I started playing rugby back in 2012. And my first practice was a tackle practice. And I started, I joined because I was dating a guy. Well, I was interested in a guy who was on the team. And um, he was like, yeah, come to practice. And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And I was like, we get there and they're like, it's a tackle practice. And I was like, okay, cool. And literally for two hours, all we did were tackle drills and just tackled each other. And I had so much fun and the coach was a mother fucking bitch to me all practice <laughs> and um she did not like me and she did not like me for the subsequent three seasons that i played with them and when i showed up to the next practice she was like huh, i'm surprised you showed up or showed up after that practice, or after the last practice, I was like, actually, I had a really good time. It was really hard, and I liked it. She goes, well, just because you like something doesn't mean that you're good at it. <laughs> I was like, you fucking C-word. I, I try to not use that because I know that it's objectionable um, on feminist standards, and I like to think of myself as a feminist. Uh, I do say words like bitch, and things like that that are not okay. Um, but she was the C word. She, like, the w things that she did and said to me over those three seasons were unacceptable. Um, especially my rookie season. She hazed me as a coach because I was a rookie. Um, she was terrible. And I hope she burns in hell. No, sorry. Ugh. I'm in the program. I'm, uh, I'm in the program. I'm just getting emotional. Um, the fellowship would tell me to forgive her and love her and pray for her and let go of my resentments and say she was a bad person and I cannot hold on to that anger because it's just going to lead me to use and drink and yada, yada, yada. Um, but she treated me. she treated me really bad and I'm fairly... And it was just because she didn't think I was good enough for her team. And instead of coaching me to be better, she just treated me like shit in hopes that I would quit. And to prove that she couldn't do anything to me, I kept coming back. No matter how bad she treated me. And so she just would treat me worse and worse. And uh, anything that she said that she hated about me, I would just do that in excess. Hated my laugh. I would do nothing but laugh. I would. I laughed in her face, like this far away from her face. Like, I I would do anything to piss her off, um, because the way she treated me, and I know that just fanned the flames. But I will. Like, I was at the point in my life at that time that I was having so much fun playing rugby. And it was the one thing in my life at that time that was bringing me pure joy. I loved it. I loved it so much. I still love it. Um, but what she was trying to do to me was unforgivable. So, yes, I was going out of my way to try to make her miserable back. But she would tell me she hated my laugh. I, I would do anything I could 
to say something funny to make others laugh, which would make me laugh back. And that one time I laughed right in her face. Oh my God. I, I, I could have jizzed my pants and, and died happy at that moment. <laughs> Cause I just, oh my God. Anyways, rugby. I played for the St. Louis Crusaders. It's a gay inclusive team, IGR. Um, that's a fun league to play for the gay team. It's heavy on the drinking. Um, once you're done playing um, in regular rugby, you go to the social or in the gay teams, they call it the third half. And afterwards you go drink and play drinking games and sing songs and get obliterated. Um, for the gay teams, you get three times as more obliterated than you do for regular club teams, which I call straight teams. Because, you know, in the gay world, there's gay bars, and then I call them straight bars, which are regular bars, but I call them straight bars. Um, I bet you didn't know there were straight bars, right? Um, anyways, uh, in rugby, um, where's I going with that? I've, I, see, I go off on tangents. Um, there, something about the drinking. I was going to talk about the drinking. Nope, it's gone. Anyways, um, I think I was just gonna say there's just there's just a lot of drinking. Anyways, so I would get obliterated, and um, so that's no good. And um, I also had uh, I was getting in shape after we moved back down here to Oklahoma. I was gonna join a straight team. And, uh, cause there's no gay team here and somebody was wanting me to start a gay team, but I'm not skilled enough to be a coach and train a bunch of newbies on how to play rugby. And like, I can't do that. So I was just going to, oops, fuck. I was, I was going to join a straight team and I was getting, um, in shape for it cause I hadn't worked out for a while and I, uh, was doing some squats and I tore some cartilage in my left knee and, um, like it was at the time, like when I first did the injury, like I just felt like my knee needed to pop. So I stopped working out immediately and just left the gym and it just felt like my knee need, need, needed to pop. Like every time I walked, it would just go pop, 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 pop is what it felt like. And I got to my car and I was just like, well, I didn't stretch. So I should probably stretch real quick. So I stretched outside of my car and then it felt worse. So I got in the car and, um, I drove home and I got up to get out of my car and I took one step up and it was fine. I took a step with my right foot, fine. Took a step with my left foot again and I fell to the ground in complete agony. And um, it was terrible. I couldn't walk um, for about three or four days. I had to use crutches. I couldn't walk, put any weight on it. Um, and then I had to put a, get a brace and the, they put, gave me a wrong brace at first. And, um, it was terrible. I couldn't work for a couple days. Um, I was on work restrictions for about a month. I, I couldn't, um, st stand. So I was supposed to be training and it was just, it was really terrible. Um, finally I got off the work restrictions. I was able to tr finish my training. And then by the time I was done training, I had to get knee surgery to get it scoped. And that, so this, the knee injury happened right as I got my new job. And that was in the beginning of May. And by the end of July was when I had my knee surgery. And that's when I had finished all of my training. Um, so then that was a month and a half of being off again. So it was just, it sucked. It sucked so bad. And so now that it's done, I have to hang up my rugby boots for good. I can no longer play, um, which sucks because I love it. It's something that's hard and it takes a lot of grit. And it's just, there was a brotherhood among rugby players that it's hard to explain. I mean, people in recovery might understand it because when, you when you're part of an AA clubhouse or an AA clubhouse, there's that kind of camaraderie 
that's kind of reminiscent because I'm, I'm part of a LGBT uh, clubhouse and there's a, that kind of feeling of kinship, but it's different for rugby. I mean, like your brothers, like you would do anything for them. And it wasn't like that when I played for the St. Louis Crusaders the second time which really sucks, but the first time I played for them, it was wonderful. Bungie. I'm still making my video, Mom. I'll come out and eat whenever I'm ready. It'll be as long as I want it to be, Mom. Sorry about that. Mom! Don't forget you got a leader six. I know. Um, sorry about that. My mom... Um, doesn't have boundaries, um, and I do apologize. Um, I might try to edit these out if I can figure out how to, but if not, I'll just leave them in and you guys can all laugh at me. Um, and now I forgot where I was. I think I was talking about Figuring out why my fan is off, which means my mom was in my fucking room. Sorry. <laughs> oh, anyways. Um, hmm. Let me vape on it for a second. Camaraderie. Um, I had really two really good teams that I had really good a really good brotherhood kinship with. I played for the St. Louis or the um, St. Louis Bombers briefly, and what's funny is I <laughs> I they're the ones who got me interested in playing rugby in the first place. I um, uh, started watching them with a friends. And with two friends that I was used to be good friends with. Um, and, um, and I later played with them. I watched them for probably two years and discovered that after watching them for two years, I still had no idea what was going on. And it was mostly because whenever I watched them, I was drunk. And um, I only really cared about when, once they came off the pitch and they would change into their clothes and... They would strip down to their boxers. So um, I was just there to support my friend Meg because she was watching her husband, Sam. And um, she enticed me to come watch one time because her rugby wives weren't there that time. She And she was like, I need someone to come watch with me because my drinking friends aren't going to be here and all the other rugby wives are going to judge me if I'm here drinking by myself. Will you come? And I was like, I don't really know anything about rugby. And she goes... They all stripped down between matches to their underwear. And I was like, I will be there in five minutes. And so for two years, I, uh, and they had two teams. So I got to watch 30 people undressed to their underwear once every weekend for 10 matches a season for two years. Really hot. I loved it. I had no idea what was going on because we would just sit there, drink, and talk. And I just knew Sam was a hooker. Um, when they pushed people up, that was a line out. Um, see, I'm trying to think back to what I knew then. I know everything now. Um, I'm trying to think of what, everything that Meg told me. And that whenever they fell down, play didn't end. So... That was all I really knew. And so, and we didn't really pay attention to the game unless the play, like what was going on was right in front of us. And we usually were, ended up being on like one end. We were, were never like right in the middle. So anyways, um, the Bombers was one team that I had good, good, um, brother, a good sense of brotherhood with. And the other that I had the best brotherhood with were the Chicago Dragons. And that was a gay inclusive team. Those guys, Though that's that was a team like you would die for the other. I lived there for one year and that seriously was the fucking best. 
I I only wish I hadn't been using drugs so heavily while I lived there. And I barely got to play with the team. I had I had two uh, foot injuries that kept me from playing in the beginning. And then later in the season, I just kept on using and I kept on missing practices so I couldn't play. But I was still part of the team. I was, I was on the team roster. Uh, I paid my dues. Um, so I, I got to par participate in, in, in all the stuff. Um, I'd go to the... Uh, except for the the away games, but um, it was just, you know, I had a, I had a team nickname of Spud because of my foot injury. Um, that's the thing. If you have to get a you get a team nickname, and it has to be given to you, and um, that's that's the thing with rugby. So it has to be given. Um, I. I will miss rugby a lot and there's still ways to be involved with rugby that don't involve playing, but I'm fearful that this early in sobriety being a social member of a team, um, that's with the heavy drinking aspect of it. Um, I would be too enticed. So maybe after I have a year of sobriety, maybe I can come back and be a social member. But um, to the to the Crusader, it's was, it was funny enough is the the straight team here in Oklahoma City are called the Crusaders. So maybe this will be a Crusaders team that I like. I need to make this. Sorry, it's not very stable. And now it's. It's crooked now, but I don't care. London Fog. I wish Noni was subscribed to my channel. She'd probably laugh at that. All right. So I think everyone who was in the stream yesterday saw what I'm working on. But for those who have not... And hopefully new people who have will be watching my channel. I am working on a corner to corner. It's going to be a baby blanket. And I'm using uh, uh, Lion Brand Mandala Peacock. I'm going to use two skeins. And this is about two-thirds of a skein so far. Maybe... Yeah, about two thirds, maybe closer to half. I don't know. I can't tell. Um, let me just one second. Don't fall. I think next time I'm going to use a stand that's not on my bed and sit closer up to the camera. This is what the cake looks like when it's not um, being used. Mandela Peacock and it's got 590 yards and it's 150 grams. Um I think it's really pretty. I saw it. I actually got it at Walmart of all places. No offense to people who love Walmart's yarn. I, the, our Walmart here tends to suck. Um, I know a lot of Walmarts actually have great selections. Ours does not here. Um, so I was walking through. This was probably a year ago that I started this. I actually ended up repurposing it for this baby blanket. Um, um, but anyways, cause I have, I have a bunch more of this to complete a blanket for me. Um, but I am repurposing it for this blanket. Um, but I saw the peacock and I snatched it all up because I couldn't believe that they had something so pretty there. <laughs> um, but I am really happy with how it's turning out because 
I have used some mandala before um, that I hated, that I absolutely hated. So it's turning out so pretty. So I'm sorry for not showing this off at the beginning for people who have not seen it. Um, and I know in Derek's video, it was not showing up the best. And I didn't look back at his video yet to see how it looked once it was completed. But I know on his camera, on his laptop, it was not showing up this vibrant. It was looking very muted. So I just wanted to give you guys a look-see at it so you can see what it looks like. Um, and I meant to look up and so I could tell you my cousin's baby's name and I totally forgot, but his name is Brock and, um, the last name, what's, Be Butemeyer? Yeah. I'm really terrible. I should know my cousin's married name by now. Well, I mean, like, he only got married a year, like, this, in, within the last 12 months, so. Anyway. Um. I guess I should probably end this video so I can go eat. I have a meeting at 7 o'clock, and I don't know what time it is. So... I'm just gonna do a couple more clusters and reminisce. Um, no, how long is this video? Oh, it's been 46 minutes. That's probably long enough. I doubt anyone will really watch it all the way to the end. I feel like I was quite boring. I feel like I'm more entertaining when I have somebody to work off of. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video and um, let me know if there's anything that you would like to see or talk, have me talk about. I am an open book. Um, please like and subscribe and share uh, these videos with your friends and tell them to subscribe as well. I would love to have more followers. And um, love yourself and love your friends and uh, be nice to people because you never know what they're going through. Thank you. Bye-bye.